So my name is Stefan Seeler. I'm a responsible design director for the brand Audi. You know, Stefan, we were just talking about how there, you've got so many designers in now. How many designers do you have inside Audi? Actually, I have not so many designers. I would have, I, I would like to have more actually. <laughs> But all together, the whole team in uh, Ingolstadt, in Germany, the headquarter of Audi, we have also the headquarter of the design, and uh, Audi design has in uh, Germany, roughly speaking, 180 people, but this is everything. There's not only designer, exterior, interior designer, color and trim designer, there's also quite a big staff of uh, model builder and also people doing computer-aided design, computer animation. So let's say all the new techniques we are testing and trying out. Besides that, we have another little, very effective, creative team in the Munich studio, design studio in the center of town. And we have another studio in Santa Monica, over right here in Los Angeles, United States. And this team is around 20 people, also designer, again, for the interior, exterior, color and trim, and also doing a certain kind of research. Now, are there certain designers that are meant, that are meant just to design concept cars, or do they design just everything? Um, no, we, we have a, a really strict strategy. The designer are do it. They are experts on certain fields. Like I said, they are experts on exterior design, or they are experts on interior design. But I like also to involve people doing production work in the next project to do uh, a concept car and then maybe very often from the concept car we, we go over into the production pro process and then the same people follow the project from the beginning to the very end. This is what we always do and this guarantees that say the genetic code of the idea from the beginning to the end and this is a, to my understanding uh, a part of the success of Audi and of Audi design, not to hand it over to feasibility designer or to engineering designer, but the designer who had the idea takes the baby to production and you get all the, the hard blood of these people or of this team into the product. And this is, let's say, the recipe we like to cook. You said that you collect uh, uh, cameras. Yeah. And you. You must have seen the difference in technology from yeah. the earliest year camera yeah. that you've seen yeah. to the oldest one that you now have. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, first of all, of course, uh, especially with cameras, it's, a, it's an industrial good and it's also industrial design. Very much down to function, you know, you have a small space for a quite complicated, in old days, mechanic way of doing, of doing uh, a result in the end. And I, 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 for example, I have a, the very first uh, Polaroid camera. And you know, the size is like this, it's super big, it's from the 1959, early 1960s. It's super big and you had to really brutally get out the, the picture in the end and it developed in front of you. And it's really also fascinating to see how the technique makes everything then more and more compact. And, I mean, the same thing today when you look at, to an to a iPod, it's, it's incredible how much you can do with such a little device. Now, how much has designing changed with the advanced technology that you're getting inside of your car? Um, in a way, you know, it changed a lot, but on the other side, it's not a lot as well, because um, from the process point of view, like we do design, it changed a lot. So in the old days, we worked completely analog, everything by hand. So it was a, a strong impact of craftsmanship in everything we did. We did full-size clay models, and it took a long, long time from the idea to the final model. It's, uh, we always do full-size models. We also do this today. And if the problem is, as a designer, you are very impatient. You want to see your idea immediately in front of you. So our dream was, of course, always to, 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 to accelerate this process. And therefore, the, the digital process on the computer and with uh, rapid prototyping is super, super for us as designers. It's fantastic because very quick we see the idea we have in our head, we see in front of us and we, we can very quickly do a virtual model and afterwards also analog model by 
taking the data and milling the models afterwards very quick. And I think this way of changing the process combined with the way of the change technology in the cars, the, the advanced technology, also creates a different, a different uh, result in here. So, you, as, you, as you see, in all car manufacturers, we are not stagnating. We have a, a big process, a, a big, big progress uh, going on. And um, in the end of the day, you see it. You see it in the result. You see it in the subtleness of the surfaces in the exterior, and especially you see it also in the interior, where you have another aspect, which is the uh, the interface, the, the interaction in between the human being and the machine. And this changed again a lot because in the in the old days it was 100% mechanic. You did everything. The whole driving process, the whole interaction process was mechanic. And now it's digital. One last question. What was your favorite car to design? My favorite car to design is always the last car we did. And therefore, it's over here on the show. It's the, the Audi R8. And it's also our show car now, the 12-cylinder 12, 12 Q7. But to be honest, the last car we are working on are the car you will see in the future in five years' time from now. This is what we are doing in the present, but I cannot talk about it. <laughs> Stefan, thank you very much. Thank you very much.